him. She was so angry at herself. She said that she would not do this anymore. It truly felt dirty, but, well, no buts, but she is 16. And she's got a baby to feed. She thought she had it all planned out. Have the baby, leave the streets behind her, get a real job. What she never thought about was the fact that she's got no GCSEs, no experience to go with that real job and no childcare. So here she is again, shot in. She shook her head angrily to herself. Her summer's going to be one next month. She had so much to pay out. The gas bill would come in. How can a 16-year-old be expected to run her own flat, she thought? This time was different, swear down. This time, she was only going to do a few weeks to get the money together. Her stomach dropped when she thought about it. Living in the flat on your own with a baby at 16 was the hardest thing she'd ever done. Sharp and on with it, she muttered to herself under her breath. As she spoke aloud, he looked up. What? He said in his deep accent. Nothing, kidding. I'm chatting to myself, she replied angrily. He threw back his head with a deep belly laugh. That's a sign of madness, talking to yourself, he chuckled away as he weighed out gram after gram of crack cocaine on the scales. She didn't smile. She didn't play along. Bun that. She started to think that there was an upside to this, if there was an upside. The upside was that she couldn't really get into debt this time round. After last time, when it all went wrong, she shook her head again, trying to get the demons out. He looked over and frowned. You okay? He said, stopping what he was doing. She didn't answer. She just looked at him and kissed her teeth. He smiled. You know. I think you're the only person in the world that gets away with that. He held her eye contact. His face was smiling, but his eyes were not. She screwed up her face and said, don't look at me like that, you idiot. She was not intimidated by him. Everyone else in the ends might be scared of him, but she was not. And where did he know it? He threw his head back laughing again and carried on weighing up. It was all just a big old joke to him, she thought to herself. She looked around the flat. She looked at the family pictures dotted around, mostly happy faces. He turned to her now serious. She knows this is serious, so she drops the attitude. Okay, blunt, he says in his strong Italian accent. Take this to Jay and to this lot of the bando. He pointed at the two piles of crack on the table, all wrapped in cellophane. This, he said, pointing to the 20, 30 wraps of crack on a tray. This is for you to sell. All profit is yours, as always. Just make sure the other stuff goes to the boys. She nodded with a bored look on her face. She placed the two parcels for the others in their backpack and reached over to her pile. She placed 10 rocks in each of her socks and he watched silently, rolling a joint. She reached for the last 10. She picked up the first rock, intending to play it in her mouth, tucking it up in her cheeks, ready to spat out if she saw a crackhead on the way. He knew this and put his hand up. She paused. You know why you're so good at this, he said, gesturing his hands to all the different drugs around him to be sold. Because I don't eat the food, she said, with a look on her face, like she just smelt something bad. Not eating the food meant she didn't take drugs. He nodded and said, yeah, but also because they know I will kill them if they fuck with you. He was not smiling. She was not smiling. She knows he means it. He would actually kill someone if they robbed her. He would kill them if they tried to rob her. And this meant nothing to her. You know, you could just give me money if you care so much, she said quietly. And then a little bit more quietly than she meant to. Her eyes, her eyes fired up and his face darkened. Why should I? I had to work as a kid and you have to work. It's life, he said. Her face now darkened. She'd been working since she was 11. Is it? Well, let's hope mum don't find out that I'm shot in for you then, In it? And she slammed the rocks of crack into her mouth, pushing them back in with her teeth tightly wrapped in cling film for her next customer and stood up fighting back the tears. Her dad looked at her and held her gaze and then looked away and she walked out of the flat, passing the picture of her own son, his grandson, laughing while sitting on the grass in Batsy Park. Blundy, he called as she walked away. His tone was soft and he knew that she, he was sorry, but she just kept on walking. She had a job to do, innit?